Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that personal growth comes with being uncomfortable. Being in our comfort zone feels safe, comfortable, and ultimately involves no risk. We feel comfortable because we know what to expect and we feel safe knowing that everything around us is familiar. But the moment we step outside of our comfort zone, whether it's moving to a new city or meeting new people, is the moment we feel that uncomfortable feeling because deep down we fear the unknown. The truth is feeling uncomfortable is a sign that you're growing. It's only through stepping out of our comfort zone that we can live life to the fullest and explore the world around us. The next time you find yourself feeling uncomfortable when doing something outside of your comfort zone, focus your attention on dwelling in the excitement of new possibilities. Besides, what's more exciting than tackling our fears and becoming a stronger version of ourselves? Your future you will thank you for it. As Mark Twain quotes, 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things that you didn't do than by the ones that you did. Throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And speaking of JLo, I know you did a tribute video recently and I saw she commented, <laughs> which I thought was epic. She said, thank you, baby. <laughs> so like, wh what was your reaction? That's amazing. I died <laughs> and then came back to life. So now I'm reincarnated. Um, no, I'm, I'm just so obsessed with her. Like anyone that follows me knows like my obsession is out of control. Um, and I actually, it's crazy because I did this tribute video to her. And then ever since then, it's kind of been crazy. Like I've, I've, been around her a bunch of different times for for different things, which is still like every time I see her, I'm like, are you kidding me? And in this scale, <laughs> like she looks like this in this world? Are you kidding? Wardrobe provided by H and M. Next up on the show, we have American singer, actress, and dancer Montana Tucker. With millions of streams and views on social media, Montana was nominated as Social Star at the 2020 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Montana, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having me. I'm amazing. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Today's a beautiful sunny day. Nothing to complain about. Life is good. I, I was just telling you, you look like Demi Lovato. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, I get it so often. I don't personally see it, but I get it. Like, I have no makeup, makeup, hair up, hair down. No matter what, I get that I look like her. I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Thank you. <laughs> but let's talk more about you. Um, I want to talk about, you know, before becoming a social media star, I know that you started acting at the tender age of eight years old. So talk to us about that experience and you know, what made you want to get into this industry? Yeah, I have always been obsessed with entertaining. My mom found these old videos of me when I was like five years old and I would have sleepovers at my house and make all my friends like dress up and, and I would direct them and say, okay, we're gonna play the Wizard of Oz today. And you know, like I would do these crazy things. And so I really just have always loved entertaining so much. And um, I started off um, modeling and acting when I was eight, and then it kind of transformed into me dancing and then singing, and it's just taken, you know, all these awesome paths in my career, and I'm I'm so thankful. But entertaining, entertaining is just in my blood, I think. <laughs> yeah, clearly, and I know that you were dancing for Ashanti and Ashley Simpson. As well. So, how do you think that kind of shaped you into building your own brand today? Yeah, I think, you know, still to this day, performing is my favorite thing in the world. And so I think that's why I also do a lot of these social media videos, because I think it's my way of like performing to the world, obviously behind a screen. But um, I just, yeah, I, I mean, dancing, I've always been so passionate about it. And as a backup dancer, you get so much experience and the experience of being on stage and performing and, and having that, you know, 
I, I can't even begin to explain the feeling that I personally get when I'm performing. And so I think that just built me into, you know, wanting to do it on a, on a larger scale and wanting to be that artist and wanting to be that performer versus just, you know, um, just a dancer. I, I felt like I wanted to do so much more. And so I think that's what led me to where I'm at now. Yeah. yeah, I love your videos, by the way. You're always so happy and it's just very positive. And I really like, you know, you can see it's your passion dancing so it definitely shows and I think that's why you have such a big audience as well so I love your videos <laughs> throwing it out there I really love your videos yeah. yeah and you know when did you realize that dancing was your passion and what kind of steps did you take to kind of make it into a career I think you know, I used to always watch Darren's dance grooves, uh, the infomercials on TV. I don't know if you remember those, but he was, you know, Britney Spears choreographer, NSYNC's choreographer, and this was before social media. So his infomercials would come on TV and I would just be like, mom, I'm just dying. I want to like learn from him. I want to dance. I want to dance. And she took me to one of his uh, dance workshops actually in Florida. And then this was like before I had any real dance training and he was like, you need to move her to LA or New York. Like she's amazing. And um, I think since then, you know, my mom really, you know, helped me out so much. And, and I started really, you know, taking dance seriously. Mm -hmm. And yeah, speaking of, you know, dancing and stuff like that, you're, you have a huge social media following. Um, when did you kind of start posting online and start seeing that people were obviously really, really enjoying your dancing? Yeah. So I, I would say that I was fairly late to the social media game. Um, I never did Vine or I never did YouTube really. Um, so I got into it like with Instagram and it was a world that I, you know, I had no idea about. I was more of the traditional route of like the traditional acting and modeling and dancing and singing and, and stuff like that. So when I got into the social media world, um, it was with Lele Pons. Um, oh. She saw a video from dance class and she booked me for one of her YouTube videos. And at the time, like, I didn't watch YouTube or Vine, so I didn't know really who she was. I was just like, oh, this, this looks fun. And then I did it again. And then the third time she asked me to teach her a dance, we put it up online and it kind of went crazy. And I'm like, wow, this is insane. Social media, you could just put up a video and it get millions of views. Like, I don't understand. And uh, and then her and I became this like little dancing duo. And that's kind of how my, my social media really, you know, took off. And, and I started taking it really seriously. And I started filming like three dance videos a day sometimes and was just like going all in. And it kind of grew really, really fast and it's, been amazing ever since. Yeah, I, I can imagine. And you know, your videos are really well produced. You can tell they're not just like they're there's a nice like professional vibe. It's a, like a professional setting. So w what's the creative process when you when you make these videos? I thank you for saying that because <laughs> I love I think like that's also why I idolize, you know, JLo or all these different things, different types of people because I feel like you know, with social media, it's on such a smaller scale, but like I have such big dreams of, you know, being in movies and TV shows and, you know, directing my own stuff and producing my own stuff because I, you know, direct and produce all of, all of my content. So, you know, my, my dream is to do it on, on, a, on a larger scale one day. And so I just always, it depends. Like if there's a new trend going on, I'll try to see how I can make it my own. Or, um, you know, if there's a song that I'm just passionate about, I'm like, I want to just create to this. Um, or, you know, I, I try to have little storylines sometimes in my videos. So I'm like, okay, how can I fit this all into one minute or 15 seconds or 30 seconds? So it's an interesting process, but I love it so much. Yeah, and, and speaking of JLo, I know you did a tribute video recently and I saw she commented, <laughs> which I thought was epic. She said, thank you, baby. <laughs> so like, wh what was your reaction? That's amazing. I died <laughs> and then came back to life. So now I'm reincarnated. Um, no, I'm, I'm just so obsessed with her. Like anyone that follows me knows like my obsession is out of control. Um, and I actually, it's crazy because I did this tribute video to her and, uh, and uh, she saw this video a while ago. Um, I reposted it. Um, and she saw this video a while ago and she brought me to Vegas to uh, promote the ending of her Vegas residency. So wow. I got to meet her there, which was amazing. And then she, she was in a, we did a video together. And then ever since then, it's kind of been crazy. Like I've, I've been around her a bunch of different times for, for different things, which is still like every time I see her, I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm in this <laughs> scale, like she exists in this world, are you kidding?
Um, but it, it's always just still so crazy to me. And then the fact that she commented, thank you, baby, it was like, I'm talking to the craziest thing. I, I literally called all my friends screaming, crying, like, and again, I've met her before, so I shouldn't be reacting that way. But I just, I idolize her so much. And, you know, I think what she's done in her career is just so amazing. And, you know, she's a great mother and great role model and all these things. So it's, it's, it's really cool that she yeah. commented. <laughs> and yeah. she posted my video on her TikTok, which is really oh, cool. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is pretty epic. And I, all, speaking of epic, I know she also invited you. Uh, Jennifer Lopez invited you to her 50th birthday. <laughs> so talk to us about that experience. And, like, that's why it's so it's so crazy to me because, you know, I don't know, like, who your idol is or someone that you've looked up to, but you never you always think they're so unattainable. You're like, I would never, like, meet them or I'll never be in the same room as them. And so when stuff like that happens, it's just so crazy. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that I, you know, I, I worked hard and, and that she, she saw my stuff and liked my stuff. So that's, that's really exciting to me. Yeah. I think that, you know, when you work hard, as you said, and you have great energy, which you have amazing infectious energy, um, you know, and you're talented. So, you know, things happen. For me, I'm putting it out there. Oprah would be like someone <laughs> epic. So I'm putting it out there, universe. Make me <laughs> meet <up>. Oprah. <laughs> it's going to happen. We're saying it. It's it's, it's gonna, gonna happen. happen. I know it. I'm gonna manifest it into existence. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you're also signed with um, Universal Music Group. So talk to us about that. That's a major milestone. Thank you. Yeah. You know, music has always been my passion. I mean, along with dancing, but social media, you know, took over my my life in a way that I never really expected. So music and you know, kind of went on the back burner. And so it's exciting that now I'm able to put music out, you know, for so long I was making, you know, these dance videos to other people's music. Mm -hmm. And so it's exciting to be able to make, you know, videos to my music and to have other people create videos to my music. Like, it's just so mind blowing to me that that's, you know, happening right now. And I'm excited, you know, to, I'm, I'm recording a lot new you know, music, new music now. And we have some exciting news that will be coming out soon about new music that we can't release yet. But um, I, I'm just super thankful that I'm, you know, I, I, I've built such an awesome platform and I'm so thankful for the journey. And, and now I'm able to like really get out there and hopefully start performing a lot again and, and all the things I love to do. Amazing. Speaking of music, you have a new song, Be Myself. What, what's the message behind it? I love it. I keep humming it every day. It's such a catchy song. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. You know, Be Myself is, is a, a song that's so incredibly close to my heart. Um, you know, I feel like I portray a lot of what I say in my song on my social media, and I have never really been able to put it into a song. And, um, I, you know, I'm all about inclusivity and about staying true to yourself. I think with social media nowadays, it's so hard to not compare yourself to others or not feel like, wow, this person's life is perfect. They're so skinny. They're so pretty. Like, why don't I look like that? Why is my life not like that? And, you know, it's so hard no matter who you are. It's very hard to not compare yourself. And so I wanted to create a song to let people know, like, it's okay to, you know, take different paths in life than other people. It's okay to, you know, go the opposite way of what people are telling you that you should do or of where you should go and that you're amazing the way you are and it's okay to, to, to stay true to yourself and to be proud to be yourself. Um, so I'm really excited and I, you know, I teamed up with Todger Call, who's one of the most talented people I know. And, you know, I originally wrote the song with my friend Justin Gesso. Um, he's an amazing songwriter. He wrote Stargazing by Kygo, and he's the singer on that, and just incredible. And um, the producers, uh, Shindo and Lash, Shindo uh, produced Peaches by Bieber. And uh, so originally, I, I wrote the song just for myself, and then I was listening to it more and more, and I'm like, this would be so great for the LGBTQ community. I feel yeah. like they would really, really, really relate to this. And Todrick was the first person I thought of that is in that community and is just so incredible. And sent him over the song, he loved it, got on it, and the rest is kind of history. And it's super cool for the music video because we are both able to share stories that happened to both of us, you know, growing up um, about my insecurities, about his insecurities, and to then show, you know, we overcame them and here we are today doing what we love to do. So. Aww, that's amazing because as you said, with social media, 
you know, everyone's comparing themselves to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, you scroll through your feed and there's just so many things that, you know, that people are comparing their lives to. And sometimes it's not always realistic, you know? Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like you're really yourself. You're very authentic and you are who you are and you can you can feel that. Like, how, how do you think you've remained to stay grounded in yourself despite your success with social media and, you know, everything? I think it's honestly so incredibly hard, but I think it's because my mom is, is was really strict growing up and uh, still is i think i'll be like nine years old and somehow <laughs> she'll still be around and like being strict um but i think yeah just the way i was brought up um you know my grandparents were holocaust survivors and i think that bled onto my mom which bled onto me to like you know always always hard for what you want in life and that like you know things are never going to be easy or aren't always going to be easy and just to not give up and to keep pushing and so I think that kind of, you know, has has translated through, like I said, you know, through the generations. And, you know, my mom has just always believed in me and has always been there for me. And so I think that's what has, you know, really helped me, I think, grounded. I think also just, you know, different things that I experienced in life. You know, I was really bullied in, in middle school and high school. And so I think um, that's why I am like so passionate about anti-bullying and body image and all these things. And so I, I try to, you know, promote that on my social media and through my music. And it's crazy, you know, I'll, I'll do these videos and I'll have people write me like, I was about to give up today. And then I saw your video and you, wow. and you changed my mind. And it's just so in, in, insane to me that a, a video could do that. And so that's what, what keeps me going and, and I think keeps me, keeps me grounded and on the right track. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're, you know, you're using your platform to inspire, which I, I really love. And I know that you also do some philanthropy work. So let's talk about some of the charities that you're involved in. Yes. Um, so like I said, my, my grandma is a Holocaust survivors and my grandma is um, still battling Alzheimer's disease. So I work a lot with the Alzheimer's Association. Um, I'm also creating a program in Florida um, for the Memory Institute in Florida with her doctor, Dr. Gronin. Um, it's actually a collaboration that I'm doing with Zumba, who I, I've been working with Zumba for years. They are the most amazing, amazing company to work with. And um, our, our visions are just the same and our brands are just completely aligned. And so Zumba and I are creating a program for the memory patients there, um, which is going to be amazing. Um, there is something in LA called Hashtag Lunch Bag that I love to do where we pack up lunches and go down to Skid Row and pass them out in Los Angeles. Um, also Red Eye Inc. I love to volunteer there. It's uh, Justin who runs it is incredible. And I love to I love to volunteer there where we um, do like a little market for the the people in the community of, of Watts in, in Los Angeles. So anytime I can, I'm always trying to do something. Uh, and I, I hope people get out there and do more for their communities as well. <laughs> I really like that and I created my platform as well to inspire you know I interview celebrities and I, I like to talk about their path to success so I always like to ask you know what are some challenges you kind of faced along the way um, before you became successful and how did you get through it yeah so since I've been doing this from you know such a young age I think I basically started working when I was eight years old which is a kind of a, a crazy concept because you know most people I, I feel like don't start working at that such, uh, at a young age, but you don't really think of like doing what I do as like work. But you know, I had to really be disciplined at a young age. I missed out when I was younger. I don't like a lot of my friends' parties, or I, you know, my because my mom was so strict because she's like, hey, she wasn't pushing me to do my career. She actually in the beginning didn't want me to do it because mm -hmm. she's like, I want you to be a normal kid. And I kept pushing it and kept pushing and begging and begging. And so she's like, all right, well, if you want to do this, you're going to have to make these sacrifices. Yeah. And so it was definitely hard as a, as a kid, you know, because I missed out on a lot of normal things. Like I didn't go to like my prom or, you know, just normal, normal things that people, you know, you, the pillars in life that you, you, you accomplish and that you, you go through. And so, um, you know, that was, you know, a little difficult because that, you know, at the time I'm not like understanding what, the sacrifice means you know i'm just mm -hmm. like oh i love dancing i love acting i love singing i didn't realize it I, at the time i didn't think of it as a job you know and so uh, you know that was hard and then also i did start modeling at a young age and then you know as i got a bit older i always felt that i was a little bit bigger than the rest of the girls there and so 
it was hard for me because I would come back from like my castings and I'd cry because I would compare myself to all the other girls that were there that were so much skinnier than me. And, and um, that's actually why I stopped modeling when I was younger because I just kept feeling way too insecure about myself. Mm. And now, you know, I could tell my younger self like, no, like, you look amazing and that's what's you know separating you from everybody else and you're beautiful and you know don't worry about looking different than others you know i think nowadays everything is so accepted which is so incredible i think you know the vision of beauty is is so different now and i think that it's so amazing i feel like we're constantly constantly changing the the norm of what people consider you know beautiful or what should be on the cover of a magazine you know it's 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 transformed so much so um, definitely those types of things I had, I had a hard time with as I, when I was younger, but as I've gotten older, I think I've, I've really learned, um, really learned, you know, again, that's why my song be myself to, to really stay true yeah. to myself and that, and that it's, it, everything's okay, that I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. I think that's such an important topic. Um, you know, just, just being happy with who you are. You know, I also had a similar experience. I did pageants. I did the Miss Universe Canada. I was Miss Ontario um, for the Miss Canada International pageant. And I also sh had the same experiences where, you know, I was comparing myself to others and, you know, looking back, um, I'm so glad I did it because, you know, it gave me confidence in who I am. Sometimes you look back and you're like, you know what, I shouldn't have worried, you know, I should have just embraced who I was and that, you know, we're all, we all are great the way we are and, you know, sometimes we just, we're our own worst enemies and we just have to really accept ourselves the way we are, you know, so I, I think that's a great message and I appreciate you touching base on it. I think it's a message that a lot of people would like to hear, you know? <laughs> a thousand percent. And listen, I still have those days where I compare and then I catch myself, but listen, I still have those days. I, you know, I'm constantly on camera, right? So every day I'm filming myself and taking photos and filming. And so it's like hard to not be critical of yourself, um, no matter if you do this for a living or if you're literally just posting on Instagram for your friends. And so it's, it's okay to have those days also. Like don't feel that if you have those days that you know, there's something wrong with you or that you shouldn't be like that because it's a very normal thing. Even the biggest celebrities feel that way. And, you know, the biggest top model, Victoria's Secret Angels feel that way too, you know? So everyone, everyone feels that at some point in their life and it's okay to feel that, but like, it's also, you gotta have that pep talk with yourself. Yeah. Like, Exactly. I'm, I'm amazing. I, <laughs> yeah, you got to snap out of it and be like, you know what? I'm a boss. I look great. Well, moving on. <laughs> what advice would you have for someone going through a difficult time right now? You know, what, what would you say to encourage them to kind of get out of a rut or maybe they're not seeing their dreams happen? But what advice would you have? I was having this conversation with a friend the other day who's going through like a, a terrible breakup right now. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously yeah. everyone has all different types of issues. I, I think that's something to also know that everybody is going through something, um, whether they share it or not. And so something that I learned when, you know, I went through a bad breakup or, or when I had something hard, like you, you get in, you psych yourself out and you, and you get into the zone of being like, this is never going to stop. Yeah. Why am I going through this? Why is this happening to me? And you, you get into your head, like our, our minds are so powerful. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how powerful our minds are. And so you have to think that like, you will get out of this, whatever you're dealing with right now, it is going to stop and it is going to change. But if you, if you don't think that way, it's not gonna change and it's not gonna stop. But you have to like, your brain is so powerful. Your mind is so powerful. If you just like sit with yourself and really say to yourself, this is temporary, whatever I'm dealing with right now, it's gonna stop and it's going to change, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's a week, but I gotta stay on track and know that what I'm going through now is going to change and it's going to stop. And I think that's something that has helped me whenever I get, whenever I'm dealing with anything in life, I feel like if I just really sit there and, you know, again, it's not the easiest thing to do, yeah. but when you do really snap out of it, then like I'm telling you the path changes. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think that's great advice. You know, you're so inspirational and I, I really liked our conversation today. Thank you so much, Montana, for being on the show. I want to ask you last but not least, um, where can people hear your song, Be Myself? Where can they stream it or listen to it? Yeah. Hey, thank you so much again for having me also. Um, but Be Myself is available on all the streaming platforms. Uh, it's on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Tidal, all the things. Um, and you could just type in Montana Tucker, be myself, and then all my social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Montana Tucker.
Amazing. We will link all of that information below for our viewers. Thank you so much, Montana, for being on the show today. It's it's really been fun. And yeah, hope, come back anytime. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Yes, <laughs> we'd love to meet you in person one yeah, day 100%, soon. 100%. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch Slide to YouTube and Facebook.